chapter one doesn't really have a lot of physics in there, but I do need to go over a few important things for chapter one. And, and one of them, the first one's gonna be the review. So let's start off right there with trig. You need to know some trig here. And it's not something complicated, right? Because remember the key thing with trig, you get all built up in all these formulas, but it's all about this. It's all about right triangles. So if I have a right triangle and let's just label all the sides, this is the way they're normally labeled as H for the hypotenuse, O for the opposite side. So if there's my right angle, I have that angle theta, that's the opposite and that's the adjacent. It turns out that all these triangles, all these right triangles have uh, similar sides if they have the same angle. And that's what all these sines and cosines do. So the first thing we do need is this relationship between the sides of all these, that's called the Pythagorean theorem. And that says that h squared equals a squared plus o squared. The next thing is that if I take the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse, we call that the sine. So the sine of a function of an angle theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. If I take the cosine of the angle theta, that's equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And finally, if I take the tangent of the angle theta, that's equal to opposite over adjacent. Those are all my ratios that I need to know. Next, if you use a calculator, and you probably will, then you need to know is your calculator assuming that you're giving it an angle in radians or degrees? Okay, and you should know the conversion between those two. So remember, two pi radians is equal to uh, 360 degrees, or more commonly, pi is 180 degrees. That's important to remember. And know how to switch your calculator back and forth? I don't know how to do it. You need to know how to do it. Next, these are ratios of sides, right? So that means that I, if, an, if I have this right triangle, the opposite side can't be greater than the hypotenuse. So this opposite over hypotenuse has to be a number between, it's going to be between negative one and one. Well, let's just put this, I was gonna put a variable in there, but it's between those two. And the same thing for cosine, negative one and one, right? You cannot have the cosine of an angle and get something greater than one or less than negative one. That's important to remember. The final thing that you need to know for trig is how to undo this. What if I want to, uh, let's say, take cosine. If I know the ratio and I want to find the angle, well, then you'd use the inverse cosine. So you just say cosine inverse of A over H is equal to theta. That's pretty much all you need to know. You don't need to know uh, the double angle formula. You don't need to know these sine squared, cosine squared stuff. I mean, they're useful and they're good. You just don't need to know them, okay? This is what you need to know. Next thing I wanna talk about, unit conversions. In physics, we measure stuff in some fundamental units. The fundamental units that we are going to use whenever possible are, uh, it should be in meters, kilograms, seconds. Those are our fundamental units. A lot of the other units, like the Newton, the unit for a force, is a combination of these. Um, torque, combination of those. Energy, joules, combination of those. So those are our basic units. There are some other ones, but pretty much everything's gonna be in these. Now, what if you have the wrong units? I'm just gonna jump in and do an example. Let's do an example of converting uh, 55 miles per hour into meters per second. And then I'll do another one. So let's say I have a velocity of 55 uh, miles per hour. That's equal to 55 miles divided by hours. So here I have a unit of mile and I have a unit of hour and I wanna convert those to meters per second. That's my preferred unit, meter per second. So how do you convert units? Don't try to just do stuff in your head, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Okay, what you want to do is to uh, think about what could I do to this that doesn't do anything? And in particular, what can I multiply that by that doesn't change it? So let's say I have 55 miles per hour and I multiply that by two over two. 
Well, two over two is the number one, and one is the identity number, so it doesn't change the identity of anything. I can multiply it by two over two, and it doesn't do anything. So I didn't change the value, really, and that's important. I can't change the, number, the value, okay, because the units are part of the number. So I can do this right here. Let's convert hours to seconds, because it's a little bit easier. What if I want to convert hours to minutes? Well, what if I did this? One hour, 60 minutes. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. That means that this is a quantity one, and I can multiply it by this. But you'll notice that the hours cancel. You can treat those units as though they are variables, and they do cancel. So now I have 55 divided by 60, and I'll have miles per minute. But I want to get miles per, se uh, miles per second, so I want to do it again, and I'll say one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And now the minutes cancel. And you see, I have to pick, uh, creatively pick those so that the unit I want to cancel is on the opposite side of the unit I, that's already there. Now I need to convert miles. And I don't actually know how many meters are in a mile, but I do know how many uh, feet are in a mile. And I've wrote it down because I actually don't know. I forget that kind of stuff. So there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So I'm going to say 5280 feet. Sorry about that. Per mile. And then the miles cancel, but now I have feet per second. I haven't done any math yet. I have feet per second. Am I going to run out of room? No, I'm not. And now I want to convert uh, feet to meters. And I know that one meter is 3.28 feet. And the feet cancel. So the only thing I'm left with is seconds and meters. So I get meters per second. So let's go ahead and do this and get the velocity, 55 miles per hour. I have my calculator right here. This is the one I like. Um, it's kind of hard to see though. 12. Okay, so I'm going to be friends with your calculator, right? Every calculator is a little bit different, so to make sure you know how to use your calculator. So I'm going to use mine. So I say 55, uh, 60 divided by, 60 divided by, 5280 times, 3.28 divided by. And I get. 24.5 meters per second. There's a section in the book about significant figures, and that's really a more important thing when you're making experimental measurements. Uh, here, more digits is better, but you don't have to go out of control and write everything. Right? If I rounded this just to 20, that'd be not very good. If I put 20.45, that's fine. I'm not going to really, that's not the thing I'm worried about right now. But I have the units, uh, 55 miles per hour is 24.5 meters per second. Okay, let's do another one that comes up. Let's say that I have uh, an area I want to, because there's a trick here. Suppose I have uh, the area of a, of a surface is 22 square centimeters. And I want to convert that to square meters. Um, so we'll use our same trick. I could say, well, I want to convert centimeters to meters. So I could say one meter is 100 centimeters. The centa means 100. Uh, all those uh, conversion, those prefixes, you should know those. They're in the book. You can look them up if you're not familiar. So if I did that, this is indeed the quantity one, but it doesn't work. Because here I have centimeters, here I have centimeters squared. So this would cancel one of those, and I would get 22 uh, over 100, which I can do 0.22 centimeter meters, not meters squared. So I actually need to do this again. One meter, 100 centimeters. And now that cancels. So now I'll get meters times meters, I get meters squared, and I get one, I get 22 over 100 times 100, so that's going to be 0 0.0022 meters squared. I did that one in my head, right? I just moved this over 2 and then moved it over 2 more because I'm dividing by 100. You can use a calculator if you want. That's fine. I just didn't do a calculator because you know. And there you go. Okay, now I want to talk about one more thing in this chapter before we get into the physics, and that is scientific notation.
Suppose I have the radius of the Earth, and it is uh, six. Well, I'm going to write the scientific notation version first because I can't remember. 6.3 times 10 to the 6. I think that's what it is. Meters. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But it doesn't really matter. Um, this is the same thing as saying 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. Meters. But we don't want to write that, right? Now imagine that I had the mass of the Earth. Oh, I think it's right. The mass of the Earth is 5.9 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So you don't want to put 24 zeros. Okay. So we have to uh, represent these numbers as scientific notation, especially when we get to the situations like this. This just means that we have 5.9 and then uh, 10, uh, 24 zeros placements after that. Um, now, the important part is, how do, you, how do you do a calculation with this? How do you calculate with scientific notation? Here is where a lot of people mess up. Suppose I multiply these two things together, which there's no reason you'd do that, but let's do it anyway. M times R is 6.3 times 10 to the 6th, and then 5.9 times 10 to the 24th. Well, the number one way you could do this in your, in your calculator, if you are not careful, especially when you get into division, you're going to cause an error. So unless you use the scientific notation button on your calculator. So if you, it's usually EE. -E. If you enter this in as 6.3 EE6, it treats that as one number. So if you divide something by that, it's going to divide the whole thing, not just that 6. Okay. So practice this. I'm going to do it myself. Let's see what we get. Um, I can't see this calculator. There we go. Drop. So I have 6.3 uh, EE6. Enter, and then at 5.9 EE24 times, and I get 3.7 times 10 to the 31st, which doesn't make sense because it's a you know why would you multiply those two things together? But I wanted to practice multiplying and uh, using scientific notation. We're going to use scientific notation, especially when we start talking about gravity. Um, but it's something that does come up and I want to make sure you know what's going on. There's also a section, section 1.1 in the, in the textbook, uh, open sex. It's pretty good, right? Because it talks about these, I, the, I, the fundamental nature of science. What is science? How do we build models? And what, what's that all about? I mean, I'm not going to test on that, but that is something that's important here. A lot of times we've already looked at that in other classes, but that's there and you can go look at that. Okay, so that's all the pre stuff. It's in chapter one. The next we're gonna get into is chapter two uh, on kinematics.